I can have your attention. Um, I think we're going to get started. There may be some more people milling in. If you have to leave, you know, don't worry about it. Just get up and go. Uh, we will uh, film this presentation, so if you missed something, you want to see it again, you want to tell somebody else about it, we'll put the links up. I'm also going to ask Mytel to give me some links for um, training demos and, and just showcasing the, uh, the products, so you can go out and look in case you missed something. Um, we wanted to uh, introduce this today to get everybody excited, as excited as we are about a new phone system. Um, the teams that we have here today are Mitel and Frontier, the teams that we chose to, uh, to give us our new phone system this summer. Um, I'm going to hand this over to Ken. He's going to, uh, to show you all the wonderful things that you're going to enjoy about this new phone system. If you have any questions, please ask. Uh, Ken can answer everything. Okay. Well, that's, that's, <laughs> uh, that's going to be tough to hit that, but okay. So I'll take a few minutes here. My name is Ken Finkelson. I work for Mitel. I'm a systems engineer. Uh, I'm the guy that if you ask the question, you know, what time is it, I tell you how to build a watch. Okay, so most people, you know, when you have that kind of situation come up, need to keep aspirin ahead if you know you've got to talk to me. But I'll try to keep it on a level or whatever that will be beneficial to you and try to go ahead and show you a little bit about what you're getting yourselves into. And you're getting yourselves into some pretty interesting times right now because you're going to be able to do probably a lot more than you are today. Before I go too far, though, I'd like to go ahead and introduce the rest of the team, starting with Shana from Frontier. Uh, Shana is your account manager here. She manages the relationship between, oh, I'm sorry, strike that. Uh, probably started in the wrong place. That's okay. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and, and introduce yourself first, so please. Thank you. Thanks. Good to see you. Uh, I'm the account manager with Frontier. Uh, I am the actual account manager, and I'm responsible for all the relationships that we have with Frontier, including services, equipment, and networks. recommending the solution along with my team uh, Frontier and Mitel. So we're really excited to be here today and we're going to share all the technology that you're going to have at your fingertips. Um, like Sherry said, please ask questions. This is not meant to be a training session where you need to take notes on how to. That's going to come later, um, but this is more of a technology um, review so you can see what, what's coming. And we have snacks. Please get up while Ken's talking. Help yourself because if you don't eat these, then Sherry's going to take them back to her office and eat them all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, thank you so much, and um, the rest of our team is here. Um, if you just want to say hello, stand up and say hello, but um, we don't need to go into great detail because I don't think we have a lot of time. I'm the local manager for the area. What's your name? I'm Gerald Cooper. <laughs> I'm Sam Rothfeld. I'll be the tech installing the system. So. If you have any questions or any concerns on the system, I just want to answer those two questions. Okay. And also from my team, Aurora Stanton. Hi, everyone. I'm Aurora Stanton. I'm what we call an area stabilizer. Uh, so as a manufacturer of the system, we don't actually um, provide the support in the day-to-day. -day. That's our partner, Frontier. They're local. They have the feet on the street. A lot of experience working with MyCal. Um, but what we focus on is really innovation, R&D, and that kind of thing. So I'm going to picture of everything. And then we move to Jason's iPad then. Okay. Uh, yeah, it'll be a few minutes. If you want. Okay, that's fine. I wish we could do this outside. <laughs> I hear you. So anyway, so we'll dive right in here. So you guys got a new, rumor has it you guys are getting a new phone system. Am I, am I right here? Okay. So the fact that you are, we'll talk a little bit about what it is that you're getting. So we'll talk about the differences between the sets, but the first thing I want to do before I go over the differences is talk about the similarities because all of our phone sets have the same basic layout there. So if you walk up from one area to another, you're going to have to retrain yourself on what the phone will go ahead and be able to do. So as you look at the instrument here, you'll notice, and there's two kinds of phones up here on the counter, you'll notice that you've got, everything seems to be in the same place, and it's by design. As you look across, you've got a volume up, volume down, speakerphone and mute, that's there. You've got a program key, hang up, last number redial, message waiting, as you can see, I have a message on this, uh, conference, and hold. 
and the keypad. So everything is all in the same place. So you don't have to go ahead and relearn everything as you, as you go from place to place. In addition, you've got the capability of what we refer to as hot desking, which will allow you to go ahead and walk up to somebody else's phone, hit a code, and make that your phone for the time that you're there, and then go ahead and, and turn that feature off when you leave. So for example, you're in somebody else's office. You know, hey, you can use my office for today. OK. You can go ahead and punch a, a, phone in, a code in, make that phone yours, go ahead and operate just like that was your phone, and then go ahead and turn that off when you're done. So you got that. And that includes things like your message waiting lamp, the last number redial that you had, any phone calls that you made previously are all going to be in that instrument until you leave. So you've also got, uh, in terms of the differences in the sets, Basically, some of them are aesthetic. For instance, this one is not backlit in terms of the display. That one is, so you can go ahead and see that. And the number of keys on there. So that's really basically the differences in the sets that you have. You also have the capability down the road, should you like to go ahead and blast web content into the phone. You Oh, no, that's fine. So this is meant to be interactive. And please feel free to stop me as we're going, OK, if you guys have any questions or you want to hit on another area. So another item we've got is the thing called twinning. So let's kind of talk about that. And this may change the way you do business today. Uh, for example, for me, I need to be reachable. Right, and I'm also on the road a lot. So I've set up a situation where if somebody rings my telephone number, area code 312-479-9031, it will ring my desk phone, but it will also concurrently ring my cell phone. It will ring on my computer screen to let me know that's happening, and it will also ring a soft phone. So I've got all of that going on at the same time. You've got that capability of going ahead and making that uh, set up to however you need, want it set up for you, and you can adjust it to what you need. For example, maybe you don't want your cell phone ringing on the weekend from, the, from work. You can go ahead and do that. Maybe you have one person that you don't want to hear from on the weekend that you can go ahead and say, if it, this person calls, send it to voicemail. Or maybe you want to have somebody that when they call you, whether it's the, the chancellor or someone, I'm not sure of your hierarchy, you want all those calls to go through. You can do all of that with this system. So again, it, it's going to be kind of different from the way you do business today. So again, we can twin sing, you know, a couple of devices together or set up a personal ring group linking multiple devices together and can do it in just about any order. And I'll show you on a computer screen how easy it is to do that. Sure, we can do that. So what I'd like you to do, if you wouldn't mind, is go ahead and call me, area code 312-479-9031, and let's see what happens. Now, this is a live system. This is actually the telephone that I use. So go ahead. OK. I'm getting it on my computer screen. I'm getting a soft phone on my pads going off. My cell phone is going to start going. It's already hitting, too. So now I, I've gone ahead, and I've gone ahead and picked it up from my telephone. All right. Hello. Hello. 
So you can kind of see what's going on. But there's other cool things that you can do with this. So I'm going to go ahead and hang up on Shane and ask her to do that one more time. Watch this. Let's say I'm walking around the office. I've got my cell phone on my pad. Go ahead and call me again. Hello. OK, so now I'm talking to her from my pad. I've actually got a soft phone going here. But I get to my desk, and I'm saying, you know, talking on this pad's a little on the inconvenient side. So what would happen if I go ahead and hit my handoff key on this phone, and now she is on my desk phone? Hello. See? Those are the kinds of things that you can do. All right? So the other thing, too, is I could set up to where my pad doesn't go off all the time. In my case, when I'm at home or whatever, I use this for things other than work. This is my personal pad. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'll have this in my living room, and I'll see a call coming in. I may snatch it, and I'll say, oops, let me go to my office, and I'll go ahead and grab it and put it on my office phone. You guys will all have that capability as well. Oh, and it, it'll, work on, uh, it'll work on any device. So depending on how, the, uh, how, the, how your system is programmed and who's set up to do what. So if you find that's a need, your system can certainly do that. Go ahead. Um, someone calls me, okay, and I pick up on my iPhone. Does it show my number of the iPhone number? No. That's a good question. The answer to that is you can program it to not do that. So if you're calling out from your iPhone using the, the, uh, the uh, uh, school system, you can blast out the telephone number from your desk and not have to worry about people calling your iPhone at all hours of the day and night. Okay, so you have that level of capability. Go ahead, Aurora. That, that will happen automatically if you have the training set up. Right. Yeah, so the question was on an incoming call. Right. No. no. And all incoming calls, they don't know that they're calling your cell phone. In fact, they actually think they're calling your desk phone. You could be answering at home. They don't know. They're calling mm. your direct number to your desk phone. That's what's showing up on their phone. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah, I had, a, I had a, a young gentleman that worked for me several years ago, and this guy loved to call me at 5.15 in the afternoon and tell me what he did through the course of the day. Now, this is a 55-year-old person, but for some reason felt he had to tell me what he did every day. Trusted him, loved the guy, great worker, but he had to tell me what he did. So one of the features that I had is I could be in my car and not have to sit in the office to wait for this 5.15 status call to go ahead and do that and had that capability as well. And then if it turned out to be something I really needed to, I could drive back to the office, hit a button, and go ahead and switch it back to my desk phone. So you got that capability. So again, so you've got that, that you've got uh, ring groups. In this particular case, I've got a web client up or whatever, and this is, this is available to you guys. Let me get rid of that error message here. Okay, so we've got a web client that just about everybody will have access to, right? And you can go ahead and see what's going on. In this case, and this is for any kind of user of any kind of device, would have this web client. So it doesn't matter whether it's, a, whether it's an Apple uh, device or whether it's a, uh, an IBM PC or a Dell or anything else. This will go ahead and work web-based for, for anything. So as you look up here, you can see what's going on. I've gone ahead and logged in. So there's a couple of different things. One is you get to see my smiley face. And number two is right below that, we've got the status. In this particular case, I've made myself available, primarily so we could go do these demos for you. In addition to that, I've got the treatment located to the right of it of how I've gone ahead and set it up. So any phone call going into 312-479-9031 will ring on the desk, on my cell phone, and on the soft phone. And in addition, I'll get a little piece of toast or whatever on the right-hand side of my computer, as you saw, indicating that there's a call coming in and who it's coming from. Right? In addition to that, or whatever, the last call that I made was to extension 29777. That would be Jim Graham out in Arizona. And to the right or whatever, I have call control over my desk phone, which means if I click to dial from this device on the left, it will dial out from my cell phone. I'm uh, sorry, from my uh, desk phone. I could also set up to dial out from my cell phone if I want to as well, or I could have it dial out from the pad if I wanted to. As we look down, you can see you've got a contact list. 
And this contact list also is a presence engine, which means you're going to know what they're doing at the time. Very, very handy if you're in a situation where you have to call for help. Let's say you're in the finance department and you may need to talk to uh, someone from uh, campus security regarding unpaid tickets or something along those lines. You could go ahead and see if the person's on there, what their status is. You could send them an instant message and kind of find out what it is that they're doing. So let's take, for example, Jay Beckett up here. You see that little clock next to that uh, instant message logo? That clock indicates that he's walked away from his PC and his screensaver is on. Chances are real good if I go to send him an instant message, he's not going to be there to get it. So I kind of know what's going on. In addition, oops, he's getting a phone call now too. You can see that his phone is ringing. You can see it's got the little bouncing thing on the receiver. As soon as he picks up, that phone will be in a raised position like it is down here for Mark Nelson. So you've got all of that capability of knowing. And this isn't a big brother kind of thing. It's more of being able to take care of things more quickly than you do today, probably, because of the tools that you have to play with. Does this make sense to everybody? As you look to the right, you can see what I've got going on in terms of unlistened to voicemails. Diane Jensen left me one while I was here setting up earlier. You can see calls that I've missed and calls that I've taken. And you can look up to the right. You can also go ahead and click on it and actually be able to listen to your voicemail if it's on there. So again, a lot of, a lot of functionality that you have in there. And I can go ahead and change statuses from here as well. So in this case, I'm available. I could go ahead and click myself and do not disturb, at which point phone calls would go immediately to voicemail. If you guys want to take me at my word, that's the case. If you want me to prove it, I can. Uh, whatever you guys want, because I know you guys may be short a little bit of time, so we'll take that as take me at my word here. And again, I can go ahead and select the device from here that I'm going to go ahead and use to have call control over. And again, for each individual status, I can go ahead and make a change. So let me, for example here, I will go ahead and change it for a second into Do Not Disturb. When I do that, you'll notice that calls are sent to voicemail, so it actually tells me what the treatment is that's going on. Does that make sense to everybody? Everybody see that change up there? Calls are being sent to. Now it's going only to voicemail. Make sense? Okay. So we'll go ahead and put myself back into service here. And once again, uh, my phone could very well ring. Somebody could call me while we're here. So it kind of gives you a, a flavor of, of how the device goes ahead and works. Can you tell you in a minute as to how you select? Because each user can select. With a given status, what phones will ring or not? So as we're working our way down, um, that same device that I showed you that exists on my, uh, on my pad here also will work on a cell phone as well. So you can put, put those clients, whether you've got an Android, a Blackberry, or if you've got a, uh, a, a Mac or a uh, iPhone, you can go ahead and do that as well. There is a client that you can go ahead and put on there and essentially do almost the same level of functionality for the unified communicator on there including getting those instant messages and things that may be important to you while you're out there in the field. All right. And you guys are more than welcome to go ahead on my, uh, on my pad there. You can go ahead and kind of see how, it, how it's set up there. In fact, we'll go ahead and do that for you right now. Everybody see that? So that's the actual client that I have on there, one that I've connected to the soft phone, and then I've got all the information, like my call history is in here. I can listen to voicemail messages from this device. I've got all kinds of things I can end up doing from here, and I can go ahead and send it from this device. Oops. I can send it from the device into the phone if I want to, and go ahead and, and, and move it around from device to device. Make sense to everybody? And like I said, you can do this the same from you can do that from an iPad as well. The iPad look is going to be a little bit different, primarily because there's different developers do you know, have different kind of signatures of the way they do that. So there's a little bit of, of how show artistic license as they've gone ahead and set this up. So they they look a little bit different, but they do the same thing. Okay. One thing that we've also got the capability of doing with this is, and I'm going to go ahead and switch to my, to my uh, client version here.
is I've got the capability, and this is the client right here. Now, using your wealth of knowledge that you've got on our product line, basically what I've just showed you, you can kind of figure out as you're looking on the client version, probably looks a whole lot similar to the one that you just saw, right? In terms of the way it works, you can see that there's folks that are in do not disturb here. You got folks that can take instant messages. All of my folks happen to be on the hook. Let's see if we can find somebody that's off the hook. Yep, you can see Mark Nelson's off the hook. So and we knew he was off the hook from the other one. So you've got this capability from the client to be able to do the same thing as well. So I could go ahead and reach out to one of my teammates now and go ahead and call him and then go ahead and establish a collaboration session from this as well. So again, some other, other things that we can do. So if you give me one second, I will go ahead and get my counterpart on the line here. This is Jim Graham. He is in Arizona. And I'm actually dialing him from my, notice how I clicked on that and my phone is ringing. Hey, Jim, how are you, sir? Excellent, thank you. And you? I'm OK. You're in a room full of people, and you're actually on television, even though, because uh, they've got a camera going here. But you don't know that, but you're actually on TV. So as a matter of fact, we may have you on TV in a second, too. So what we're up to a point where we're going to kind of show everybody UCA into MCA. So we're actually going to go ahead and be able to take you from a session where we're on the phone. We'll be able to escalate that to a video. And then we'll be able to take it even further and take it from video into a collaboration session. So if you watch this right now, there's a couple of different things that we can do. If you look here on the diagram, you can see that handshake tool up there. I can go ahead and open up a collaboration session with Jim to go ahead and do that by clicking on that handshake icon. And by the way, there's about five different ways that you can do it. I'm just showing you one here. So you can make this work for you any way that you want. So as we go ahead and click on that collaboration session, we're going to go ahead and offer him a topic. So we're going to say Illinois College ICE test. And I want to be able to do video and web with and I'm locked up here for some reason. Jim, do you have your client open? I do. Yeah, I'm getting a fail here, so Oh, wait a second. It was just video that's locked up. I apologize. Order. Do you have your camera on? I do. OK. OK, well, let's just go to web. So I've gone ahead and established a web session. You're going to see some things bounce around now. And you can see that I've gone ahead and started a web session here. And you'll see that Jim Graham name has just popped up here in the session as well. So now I can do a couple of different things. So you can see that I've got him. And I can go ahead and establish my video as well. See? So you've got Brady Bunch video, if you want to call it that, with the tiles there. Now, I personally have had up to 19 folks on this at one time. So we've had the entire uh, systems engineering team for the central region for Mitel on this at one time working, and it's worked great. So you can see what's going on. I can go ahead and make the faces bigger, if I'd like. I can go ahead and make them smaller and just have uh, share information as well. Right? But in addition to this, while we've got Jim here, we can go ahead and I can do a share of my desktop to him. And I can go ahead and share the entire desktop. So let's go ahead and do that. And it's going to ask me, are you sure you want to do that? And I'll go ahead and click yes. So now I'm sharing my entire desktop. And this is what Jim is seeing right now. In addition to that, while I'm doing this, I could go ahead and open up a, an app, let's say like Word which is running right now. And you can go ahead and see that I've got the phone information. So Jim can see all of that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and come back here. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing with Jim. And I'd ask, Jim, can you go ahead and share something with me right now? Sure, absolutely. Now, you'll notice, all right, so now if you look very carefully, you see a thing called viewer just popped up here. And this is my ability to see what Jim is doing. So I can go ahead and click on that. And now I can see his desktop. And in addition to that, what I'm going to do is, as much as I like looking at my own face here, I'm going to go ahead and shrink that a little bit so you can kind of see what's going on. In addition, or whatever, if I've got a large quantity of participants, I can go ahead and have them showing up there. If I'm the leader, I can delete them from the bridge if I need to. You get somebody, if you've ever been on one of those bridges where somebody won't stop talking, 
Or worse than that, they have music on hold, and they put you on hold and kill your whole bridge while they're doing that. You can go ahead and take them off by, by clicking on that. All right? Yes, you can mute participants. Right. I can set the... Right, and the other thing too is we can set this up to record the event, right, and it'll go ahead and send a message out to everybody indicating they're being recorded, and then it'll send an email with the attachment of the recording to, your, uh, to the, to the uh, owner of the, of the bridge. Very, very handy. Go ahead, sir. That is absolutely correct. And you can also make the outside folks leader as well, leaders as well so they can share their desktop with everybody on the line. So you can go ahead and do that. Absolutely, you can. So similar to like if anybody's ever been on a WebEx call, now we can generate phone numbers and hand them out and say, okay, call mm -hmm. this number at this time and, and open up a, a conference group with actual mm -hmm. collaboration on your computer. So that's a mm -hmm. feature that we got. Right. In, in one case, for demo purposes, and I'm sure you won't be doing this, but I had a little LAN in my house with like five different computers, and I took this little tiny computer and put it on my kitchen table looking out. And I'm sitting there trying to do this demo. This cat goes on my back porch and starts doing all these strange things on the back porch. Everybody's watching the cat. I can't get a word in edgewise. Nobody's listening to me. So, but you do have the capability of having multiple devices. You could use your home machine as well to go ahead and do that. You don't have to be on the company land to do that if you send that invite out to everybody. So they don't have to be on your network. All right. So you can kind of see that Jim's put up a... Uh, uh, a uh, presentation here, but you can see how that goes ahead and works. Very, very helpful, very, very useful. So again, you don't have to be in the same place to go ahead and make something like this work. You don't even have to be on the same network. Although you guys have, do have a great computer network here. I can tell you right now, whatever, because I've been in places that don't. This is a really good network you guys have here. You should be really proud of it. So I'm going to go ahead. Jim? Yeah. Anything you'd like to add, sir? Thanks, Jim. Anybody got any questions while we have this up? Go ahead, Shana. Yeah, I was um, talking, so I may have missed this. Excuse me. But did you also talk about the fact that you can record any Yes, we did. Yes, you did. Excuse me. That's okay. That's not a problem. Okay. All right. Jim, thanks for your time. I appreciate you joining, sir. Very, very welcome. Let me know if you need anything else. I'm here all day. All right. Thank you, Jim. All right. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Okay. Give me a second to go ahead and get back here. There we go. Everything's out. We talked about how easy it is to go ahead and, and set up. So let's talk about that for just a second. So we talk about the statuses, right, that are there for available. And this is how easy it is to go ahead and set up a status. In this particular case of available, I've got all the items that are potentially in my ring group, right? So my cell phone, my soft phone on that, on that uh, tablet, my, my desk phone, all of those things are there. I can do any combination of things. There are several that are in the can so to speak. So coming with it is this list of potential statuses on the left, but you can add a new one if you want and have a special treatment to it. But in this particular set case, when I am available, when calls come from my desk phone, they get sent to my ring group, and at this point my desk phone rings, my soft phone rings, my mobile phone rings. I have agreed to accept video calls, and I've agreed to accept instant messages. I can toggle any of those things on this treatment, and then I can have multiple treatments which I can do the same thing to as well. 
So again, you're not restricted. If you've got something that you specifically want to do, you can go ahead and do that. In addition, there are more options that you can go ahead and do to these. So in the available stage, I can go ahead and do cool things like set up preferential treatments to certain numbers. Uh, for example, or whatever, if you have somebody that you maybe don't want to talk to, you can send them to voicemail. If you have somebody that you must talk to, assign them a different treatment. So you have those kinds of, that level of flexibility. You probably don't have today, when you're picking up a phone with no caller ID and you don't know what's going to be on the other end, at this point you're going to now have a lot of ways that you can go ahead and deal with this, in addition to the caller ID that's on all these phones. So does everybody have caller ID today on your phones? Yes? No? no. Show of hands, no. Yeah, not everybody. Okay, so you guys, with all of these phones or whatever, they do have caller ID on them. So, questions on this? I'm going to go ahead and scan down. So we kind of talked about collaboration, and we talked about Mac users. And again, a lot of, a lot of different things in Windows or whatever you can go ahead and do on the Windows client. You can go ahead and do a video call person to person if you want to go ahead and do that, if they have the video turned on and have that, that capability. Uh, soft phone or whatever, which I kind of showed you on there or whatever is a is future for the Mac or whatever, but it's available today. So any any questions in terms of what we kind of covered to give you guys an overview today? Again, the thought process here is bring your own device. We no matter what you have, we've got something that'll go ahead and work with you. Okay, so if you've got the, the, the tablet, the uh, Android tablet, or whether you've got the iPad or the iPhone or the Android phone or the or the or the BlackBerry phone, regardless of what you have, we have something that will go ahead and work with it to where you can do the vast majority of these features that I showed you today. And the calendar and everything? Sure. So there's a couple of different things that you can do with calendar. And for right now, it, it works with, uh, with uh, uh, Outlook today. Now, for me personally, it, the advantage with this is that for, for the integration is that, let's give me a second here. And again, not very hard to go ahead and, 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 uh, and, and figure out how to go ahead and set it. It is flexible to the user. For me personally, I can't use it. And the reason being is that people will block out my time for a meeting for an hour we'll go ahead and figure it out in about 90 seconds and then the count because it's so intelligent it will go ahead and block out your phone calls for the rest of that hour so you're not disturbed during your conference other folks to where if your schedule kind of matches what your outlook is it's a wonderful tool because what will happen is it will go ahead and scan outlook and it'll go ahead and say okay you've got, a, you've got an appointment between 9 and 10 I'm not going to ring your phone between 9 and 10 I'm going to send all your calls to voicemail until you get back and then I'm automatically do it you just got to do nothing Make sense to everybody? So you got that flexibility. So you can turn it on or off, and it will go ahead and link to out. Now, I know you guys are Outlook Exchange here, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it should be out in, in May. should be. So. No, I mean, usually or whatever people, t sometimes those things go a couple of days here or there. I don't want to tell you May 1, and have you guys all ready to go or whatever, and then not have it happen, so. Oh, today is May 1. Okay. What's that? <laughs> uh, it, it is not turned on right at this moment, but uh, it very well may be or whatever. It could be. I could have an email in there since I've been on the road the last two days. It's telling me to download a new client, so uh, haven't seen that. So Anyway, so you guys got a pretty good, decent view of what's going on. Again, you, know, you, you can have as much or as little control over this as you, as you want. I advise you to, to walk before you start running. But there's a lot of things this, this device will go ahead and do for you. A lot of things this, this whole system will go ahead and do for you in terms of the way you're doing business today that will probably make your life a lot easier. So if anybody here is a little bit nervous about it, you know, it's a new change and sometimes change is a little bit scary, or whatever, this isn't going to be hard at all or whatever. Usually it just, you know, a, a day or two. And uh, you guys are going to be as comfortable with this as what you have right now. It'll be more, of, okay, well, it does this. Now what else can I get my hands on? What else can it do? So. Uh, wonderful uh, tool and have not had really any negative feedback for any of the folks that have cut over. So. And 
sure. Sure. So let's let's talk about what what's going how to how to do that. So again, using everything that you've learned today, you can see that I've got Aurora Stanton who's sitting over there. I've got her status right now, and she's saying that she's mobile right now. In addition, she's got the capability of receiving instant messages, and she is on the hook. She is not uh, talking on the phone right now. So let's go ahead and send her an instant message. So I click on that once. Again, not not hard to do, and I can go ahead and type a note. If I can spell her name right. <laughs> so I've gone ahead and sent her an instant message indicating that, that she's there. Now she's going to go ahead and send me one back, and you can see what's going to happen. More like you talk too much or... Okay, so you can kind of see what's, uh, what's going on. V very, very easy to go ahead and do. I'm doing that from my Right. Right. And I... And And, and I can do that from my Android as well. So I can do that from my Android cell phone. Oops, took it off there, but the Android cell phone that's up there, I could do it from that. So again, I could do it from a BlackBerry. You can do that from any device that's there. So one thing I did want to do, and I just want to skip around for a second, is that there are other things that a system like this will allow you to be able to do. And I don't know whether they're in your system or not, but we've got a, a relatively new device here called the UC360. The UC360 actually will go ahead and do point-to-point -point video or itself plus three other clients on your network. So it does have the capability of being not only an extension on your phone system, but it will also go ahead and allow you to go ahead and do video calls. It will also allow you to do uh, collab sessions and be able to put up presentations right from this device. Because if you look on the side, there's actually a little USB port there. You can actually put a, put a memory stick in there with a PowerPoint Prezo. It's got a, a, uh, an Android client on there that will allow you to play that over the screen. So in this case, for example, I've gone ahead right now and I've got it set up in video mode right now. And again, I can have somebody else that I'm talking to on the network. Unfortunately, I've got nobody in my office today. Otherwise, I'd go ahead and actually set up a video call out to, uh, out to the city of Chicago. But uh, all I would have to do is just dial them up like an extension. And again, this can behave even just as a, as a regular phone if you wanted to. So one thing that I can do is, if you give me a moment here. You know, it's saying walk softly and carry a big memory stick. So you can go ahead and connect up a stick to the side of it. And let's say I go ahead and I click on that and I hit my smart office. I look at my USB stick. And let's say I've got a presentation in here for the UC360. I can go ahead and call that up. And I can go ahead and click on that and actually have that device in there. Now using, if you folks have never seen this before, right? Anybody ever see this product before besides the Frontier folks or the, or the Mitel people? Okay. Using your knowledge, how do you think I would advance that slide? Anybody? Somebody said, did you say slide? Exactly right. Very, very intuitive, right? So you could walk into a room that had one of these things in there and with just about two minutes of training be able to do that. How many folks have ever tried to do a video conference call with one of those uh, big floor-to-ceiling room systems or whatever? Ever tried to do it for the first time? A little challenging? Okay. Again, you don't have to deal with that here. You could put something on a sheet of acetate that may be like two sentences and be able to go ahead and do that and be able to activate it. In addition, you can go ahead and network in. If you're on the computer network, you could take control of that from a PC and do your presentations that way as well. We do not require special TV sets or anything else to work with. Any flat screen TV, any kind of projector that's got an HDMI port will work on this. So you don't have to spend like the $10,000 toilet seats in the military, right? You don't have to get something special, right? You can go to Best Buy for $200 or something, get a TV set, put it on the wall, and it will go ahead and work for you. 
in addition to whatever the cameras are also off the shelf, they are IP cameras. Uh, you probably have these cameras in your security system or will be getting them in your security system. So again, totally, uh, totally IP. You can go ahead and work with this. And the, uh, the, the pricing is very, very inexpensive in terms of uh, a video conferencing system. This particular device will handle itself plus three others. You can go ahead and use the phone system that you have to add additional folks on a conference, video conference to that if you wish to. Go ahead, sir. Something for you? Okay. Not a problem. So anybody any questions on that? But I did want to bring that along just to kind of show you because that's when you get a system like this, an IP-based system, you have capabilities of doing a lot more things than you do today or whatever. You're not, it does give you a lot of different avenues and you can go down. So I urge you to use your imagination. It always saddens me when I talk to people and they've had a system for like a year or two and they come up to you and say, you know, it'd be really cool if your system did that. Okay, look at it. Well, it does. You know, it, it, you've got it. So take advantage of it. There's a lot of things that you can do with it. So for my uh, uh, counterparts in IT in the back of the room, is there anything that you wanted me to go over, anything that, that I have not hit on that you wanted me to spend some time with before I go to Shana, who's going to, I'm sure has a few things. Right. Right. So what? What specifically? Or I'm sorry. And we just did that last week with a, uh, where we actually configured a phone system together on the line. She had the benefit of talking to the customer. I had never met the customer before. And we got together and said, okay, did they want this? Okay, how many of those did you want? How many of these did you want? And we were able to work together on the configuration. It probably took for a, how many ports, a big system, right? I mean, or a bigger system, right? Several hundred ports. Uh, we were able to do a design probably in, in a few moments. Very, very quick to go ahead and do. So very handy to go ahead and have. And all I did was I just did what we did earlier. I just went ahead and gave her the view to my PC and I said, just call it off. And I just keyed in the numbers. So. OK.
Okay, what else? Go ahead, ma'am. Yes. Yeah, you could do that. There's a, there's a lot of ways you can do that. So the answer to your question is yes. I'm, going to, I'm not going to tell you how to build a watch, right? But I mean, there are multiple ways that you can end up getting that to happen. So I would suggest that as the installation starts, you kind of outline with that person that's collecting that information and say, we need it to be able to go ahead and do that. And they'll give you the best way to make that work for you. But I can think of like four ways right off the top of my head to do that for you. So you're going to be fine. What else? Yes. Yes. Okay, so when you're dialing out, if you're using your phone and you've got the client on your phone, what kind of phone do you have? Okay, so if you're dialing out from that, you'll get a little menu that will pop up. Is it, do you want the phone system to call them or do you want your cell phone to do that? So you got that capability of having that on there. So you can go ahead and do that. At that point, what will show up in their phone is your telephone number, area code 217 or whatever, from the campus. Okay, it's not going to show up from your cell phone. If you want to just call from your cell phone, it'll say, do you want to call from the cell phone? You just click yes, and then you go ahead and do that. So you have that option. But that's a toggle that you have to have that you turn on so that it's there for you and it gives you the choice. Right. That's correct. And that's why you can go ahead and set up. Now, more importantly than that, Sometimes the people that you want to contact for business purposes are not the people you want to hear from on Sunday at 2 p.m., right? So that's why you would go ahead and call them from that, uh, from that device. Okay. There's another reason to leverage the phone network or the phone system when you're taking that call. It's you want to transfer it back to your headset, your handset when you get to your office. You can only do that if you're using the phone switch itself. If you called on the cellular network and started that do, do you remember I showed you that earlier where I just hit the button on my phone and snatched it back from the, from the pad to that? You, oh, okay. You want to see that now? Okay. we will be glad to do it again. All right. So what else do we have out there? Shane, I know you had something earlier, so yeah, what would you like? I just emailed you a link if you wanted to share that real quick flash demo for that okay. Yeah, the only problem that I've got is I have no, I'm not sure whether the audio will go ahead and work. So oh. I can try it. So try that's it. not a problem. That's what I'm going to work on right now. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it in a second. Okay, we're going to go ahead and, and do that demo. So give me a second here. We'll go ahead and we'll power that up. So, we're going to come out away from the top. 
I found I can uh, go in and change my status just by clicking on in the office, and I can go and change it. So myself to uh, anything here, so people know kind of what's going on. I also put text. I opened it from I opened it from that device. So I don't think think on the fly I can do that. Yeah, I don't think so. No, that's his. Not by much. Okay. Down below here, you can see as I move my messages, I can see different messages from people that I work with. Voicemail messages. On the right hand side, I can go ahead. And I know it's showing up in a window. Sorry. You also see in the middle that there's a the, soft this will be, option. will be fine. The new the most of, um, what we've uh, just rolled out here. So I wanted to turn that soft one capability on. I can just toggle it on. I'll just go through connect. The neat part about this is currently I'm working from home, and this is actually uh, connecting back to the corporate office, and I can run the soft phone right through my UCA and, and then talk right to my, uh, my iPad. So you can also see down at the bottom, I have some different groups that are available to me. So I can go ahead and look at all my contacts if that's what I want to see and very easily go in and search for people. Or I've actually created some of my own um, personal groups. So I have a systems engineering group. So I'm able to go ahead and see who's available in there. If I wanted to get a hold of one of those people, I can simply go ahead and click on the person that I want. And it'll pull out their contact information. So I happen to be uh, in the demo with Josh earlier today at Ambo Field um, up in Green Bay, Wisconsin. So they're able to see that. And I can click on any of the numbers to be able to go ahead and call him. Or if I wanted to uh, work with him on an instant message, I can actually pull that up and uh, see the instant messaging capability right from there. So a couple different things that I'm able to see here is the, uh, the instant messaging. So I'm um, going to go ahead and continue that. If you look to the middle of the screen, you can also see I have some other contacts that I've been doing some different messaging on, and I can go through and toggle into those different instant messages. Again, on the left hand side, I can go ahead and see a little bit more uh, detail on the different people that I'm working with. Or search for anyone that's in my contact. Pull up all my contacts that I'm looking for. Jimmy Moon, for example. I can pull that up. Oh, there's Jimmy. I can see him and then click on him. If I want to go ahead and try to get a hold of him, I can hit his desk phone and go ahead and call him. Okay. Let me go back to uh, look at the contacts here. My groups. We'll use one of the IDs, for example. Oh, Jay's uh, the office. That's me. But if I wanted to, I could go ahead and dial him. We can see that Jay's on the Location settings, so I can actually go and set up different locations. That if I'm in different locations, I can actually have my calls run to me personally. I don't really use that feature, but I do have the access to be able to do that, as well as access to different schedules that are available if you want to schedule my, um, my calls to route me to different things based on time of day. So I mean, I want to be going in at 7 p.m. to my out of office screen, for example. I can go in and set different schedules to change my status. Again, here's my status. So when I'm in a demo, I can go in and see them, have a, a different demo name. I can say custom message for them, um, the text message to them if somebody's trying to reach me. Right now, I have it set to bring my calls to my desk phone and my mobile phone. I allow instant messages, and then I play a auto reply saying, please realize I'm in a demo. Also, some different phone options that are available. So that's just a quick little tutorial on some of the things that are now available in the UCA mobile. Uh, current release here in uh, February 2013. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to me at jason underscore nuff at mytel.com. Have a great week.
Okay. All right. So, any questions, comments? This show is for you. So, if you guys got anything, please feel free to go ahead and ask. Anything else? Any other questions? Anything else you'd like us to go over? Any? Before, before we end, we had a couple more people join us. And I just, if you don't mind, if I'm from here, standing up and introducing yourself and what your role is, that would be great. <laughs> I'm Stephen Johnson, and I'm a CPE project manager. You guys are going to be seeing a whole lot of me. I am going to be the one coming around to assist with the advanced gathering. I'm pretty well talked out, but if you guys have anything, uh, I'll be disassembling here probably for the next 20 minutes or so. Feel free to come up. We can talk then. And thank you all for your attention. I hope I didn't hit you guys too hard with the geeky stuff. And uh, I appreciate everybody listening. Thank you so much. <laughs>